r slash ask reddit who is the most overrated person in history my sister i do stuff too mom i feel this in my soul me too i don't even have siblings jesus christ she goes to one regional spelling bee she didn't even get far and it's all what a bright young girl but then when I start a rock collection it's please stop showing me bits of the driveway. That's not a rock that's a frog who made you so goddamn weird put that poor animal back. Spelling bees are Victorian contests where children go to cry. Rocks are the product of years worth of geological processes. That's all I'm saying. To Tenkhamen, or King Tut as he is sometimes referred. He was a boy pharaoh that only reached the age of maybe 18. Born from incest and suffered scoliosis a bad foot, walked with a cane, and contracted malaria, and likely died from an infection from a broken leg. Also when he came to power married his sister and had two miscarriages. This poor boy had lots of power, but was sick all his life and likely his advisors made all decisions for him and eventually succeeded him. Also had a very short reign that ended with Egypt at war, they would lose under his successor. Sadly, the royal family in Egypt at that time frequently married their half-siblings. The last doc I saw on Tut theorized that he broke his foot in a chariot race. He's not remembered because he was a great ruler but because his pristine tomb was found. Tomb raiders have destroyed and stolen the contents of so many tombs that finding his tomb taught historians a great deal. So Tut wasn't the big deal. Finding his intact tomb was. If I recall correctly his tomb was also very plain when compared to the tombs of more important rulers. I can confirm that I have visited his tomb in the Valley of the Kings and it is knock your socks off incredible. I shudder to think at the treasures that would have been found in, say, Razis 2's tomb. Also, I was wandering around the National Egyptian Museum, also highly recommend a visit, and turned around and fully unexpectedly found myself face to mask with Tut's death mask. I nearly fainted. I thought it was just a symbolic thing. Never realized that it was real and that I'd be seeing it. The reason we care so much about him is because of his incredibly well preserved tomb. And it was only so well preserved because he was such a minor pharaoh that everyone forgot where his tomb was and another pharaoh built on top of it, concealing the entrance. Haha <laughs> didn't know that one. Yep. And he didn't even have a tomb constructed. It was one not meant for pharaohs. Now I feel bad for him. I'm happy he got so overrated a millennia into the future. Guy Fawkes. He was a minor cog in a conspiracy that he didn't even know all that much about. He was tasked with a dead simple objective. And he failed. He gave up the names of all the co-conspirators that he knew about. But most of them operated on a much higher level than this chump. So they got off Mossity scot-free. He had one job and he ducked up three. Basically. He doesn't deserve the pages that his story is written on in history books. I 100% thought this said Guy Fieri and then I read the rest and thought I missed some huge news. I would watch a movie about Guy Fawkes only if it was played by Guy Fieri. In fairness, I can't blame him for snitching on his compatriots. They had time and lots of very pointy and or hot instruments, and knowledge on how to keep someone alive quite a while with such things inserted in rude places. Yay. Reddit's talking like they wouldn't sell out their mum the second a red hot iron came within a foot of their face. If you come near my toes with a pair of clippers at a slightly off angle I will tell you anything you want. All they'd have to do is show my ankle the corner of my bed frame and I'm done. Jack the Ripper. More overhyped not overrated. But he only killed 5 people. It's not like he's the original Dexter. Yeah I really hate this story. Overtold, over theorized, only reason no one has pinpointed him was because it was in 1888 before crime investigation matured and they didn't have the technology. Th now back to my hunch. Everybody talks about Jack the Ripper, nobody talks about the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run. I personally don't think so, you have to understand that he was killing at a time the world was very different. Forensic science was just starting and widespread media was fairly adolescent. He had so many qualities that made him so famous. First, his name. Rarely has a serial killer name been so menacing or evil sounding. Next, the nature of his killings wasn't just straight up murders, but they were ritualistic and evil in nature. Next, his conversations with the press. He often sent taunting letters to the press and the police and was always steps ahead of them. 
This has been done by serial killers since, but he was the first to truly do it. And last but most important, he was never caught. They went through thousands of suspects and no one has ever been even close to figuring out who it was. It captures the imagination of everyone. Much in the same way the D.B. Cooper mystery has. Yep, people have killed more or in a worse manner. But no one captured the world's attention like old Jockey Boy did in the late 1800s. Some of the Ripper letters were definitely fake and arguably they all were. A lot of it was journalists drumming up attention for their own newspapers or just pranksters. Mother Teresa. Learning about her misdeeds was really hard to reconcile with the image painted by popular media. She felt that suffering made her closer to Christ. Her facilities were often dens off, despite her having the resources to fund them with proper medical staff and equipment. I was still drinking my morning coffee when I typed this out. I think dens off speaks for itself though. Semicolon. Suffering brought her patients closer to Christ. As I recall, she herself was treated in a San Diego hospital when she became unwell. Mia Khalifa. Her thinking she's a big person in sports now is ridiculous. No one follows her for her sports opinion lol. So true. Mia Malkava exceeds Khalifa's abilities in all regards. Waldo. Why should anyone even care to search for him? He's done nothing. The fact that he's always hiding is probably because he's done something wrong. Plus that ducker only has one shirt. Today I learned Waldo is just a wandering homeless man. This whole threat can be summarized in a surprise ending. Nobody is perfect. Pobardi's nerfect. Nice stroke. Pam. Except for Bob Ross, Fred Rogers, Steve Irwin, and Keanu. How dare you leave out Terry Crews. Mother Teresa believed the suffering of the poor was beautiful. She also let the sick people she helped go without medicine to bring them closer to God. Different story when she became sick though. Ioannis Metaxas. He was the leader of Greece from 1936 to 1941. Most famous for not surrendering to fascist Italy during World War II. The only problem is that Metaxas was a fascist dictator himself. Yes, but he was our fascist dictator. I thought he was the founder of Iowa and Texas. I'm gonna have to go with Hitler. His paintings really weren't that great. Hitler could have become a great flower painter but he chose the easy path. Ken M. Thomas Edison. Let's be real here. Who isn't overrated? Euler. Ducking Mad had lost vision in one of his eyes due to the strain of his work. Yet he continued. He continued until he were no longer able to see on his other eye. Now that's some dedication. John Lennon. Don't hurt me. I'm a big Beatles fan. But somebody had to say it. George was the true genius. George has always been my favorite. John was too consumed by anger. Paul is always trying so hard to be cute and to please. And while Ringo seems super chill and a cool guy, he's not a good singer or songwriter. Person. George, however, was always trying to make sense of the world and to view it from the largest perspective. He continually sought that serene setting in the midst of the maelstrom. His early songs were fine, but IMHO he later became a better singer-songwriter than Lennon or McCartney even before the band broke up. But something is a masterpiece, and it was really the moment when I think many people realized that the quiet one had found his voice and now had something inspiring, beautiful and eternal to say, of all the Beatles. His solo work is by far the most enjoyable and the most consistent. Of course, we'll never know what John might have done and how he would have grown had he not been killed. But IMHO, George was the best of them because in many ways, he had all of John, Paul and Ringo's qualities within himself in perfect balance. Ronald Reagan. He was always a popular president, but he has since been recast, mainly by conservative historians, as a great one as well. Yes, you can easily place him on that pedestal. You would merely need to ignore the Iran Contra scandal, the huge budget deficits, his environment ignorance, his do nothing reaction to the looming AIDS epidemic, his courting of Saddam Hussein, and numerous other blunders. And he didn't win the Cold War. The war in Afghanistan started in 1979. Reagan was still in California. Erwin Scrudinger. He is both overrated and underrated simultaneously. As for Heisenberg, I'm still uncertain. Mao. 
500 points have been deducted from your social credit for this comment. You are no longer authorized to wear shoes in the subway train. Xi Jinping looks like Winnie the Pooh. Shyanaman Square Massacre. Uyghur Camps. Tibet is a sovereign state. Hong Kong is sovereign. Taiwan is a sovereign state. Stalin. Literally a mass murder. Still hailed to this day by a majority of Russians and many many other Dumbass communists around the world. Most people that talk about Stalin have no idea what they're talking about. Sounds like politics and people in a nutshell. Henry VIII. Let's be honest. All he did was strong on the church so he could marry another woman the fat greedy sod. Do people consider him a good king? A lot of people know about him because he's the most recognizable British monarch aside from the Queen due to his penchant for divorce and splitting Catholicism. Again, but I never got the impression that people idolized him or anything. They say Henry VII spent his entire reign making the crown rich. Only for Henry VIII to come along and spend it. GRRM used him as the basis for Robert Baratheon too. Steve Jobs. He's overrated. Because people think he was a great inventor or something. And he wasn't. But he's underrated too. Because he was Apple's filter to stop horrible designs from getting out in the world. And Apple doesn't have one of those anymore. Software companies need a joke. Jobs killed projects at Apple that were garbage. Now there's nobody like him left. And so we got the iOS podcasts app. Which was designed by morons. There needed to be some jerk at Apple with authority to say that's garbage. You can't ship it. Fix it. As more and more Apple stuff gets rewritten. It's only going to get continually worse. Yep, I hope Tim Cook is looking around for a replacement. Cook is great as a steward of the company keeping it afloat. But he really does not seem to have that I know what people want before they wanted thing Steve Jobs had. And honestly that is a very cult leader like ability. Garfield. We all hate Mondays. You ain't special. Kim Kardashian. You know what's weird though? The only time I see anything about her is online. I've never had a conversation or heard anyone talk about the Kardashians in real life. I wouldn't know who she was if it wasn't for Reddit. So is she overrated? Maybe. But I think most people just don't care enough to rate her. I don't even understand why she's so hated. She's in a slightly popular reality TV show. I don't like the show. I don't beach and moan about how she's ruining the world and I hope she dies. I just don't watch her TV show. My wife does watch the show though. She recognizes that it's stupid. It's just mindless entertainment for her as she unwinds from a long day of work. She's just not that big of a deal to have strong opinions about. One way or the other. XXXTentacion. I once read somewhere that in the future, he'll be looked at in the same way as Tupac as was. I just don't see it. Che Guevara. Horrible. Horrible. Person that somehow became a symbol of rebellion and freedom. You're gonna piss off some middle class white college kids experiencing freedom for the first time with that answer. Gandhi. Are you sure? His words are backed with nuclear weapons. Amelia Earhart. There were plenty of trailblazing and better women pilots yet Amelia is a household name because she attempted something she died while trying. The part that made her famous was the question of did she die? Hillary Clinton. Now before you go all nuts on me, hear me out. Never before has a feminist ridden the coattails of their husband the way Hillary Clinton has. She moved from Arkansas to DC, then to NY and 6 months later was a senator from there. Come on. She was horrific to Barack in the primaries in 2008, why he gave her a job, I'll never know, and was entitled to the nomination in 2016. Hillary is no dummy, but if not for Bill, she would be a real estate attorney back in Little Rock. Barack Obama. He received a Nobel Prize and is widely respected and admired, but if you really look at what he accomplished, it's pretty lackluster. Henry Ford. In business. Engineering and manufacturing. He's revered like a god. Professors like to gloss over his overwhelming anti-semitism. Ford wrote and published a wildly anti-semitic newspaper, which was spread around the Ford Motors facilities. Those papers were republished in Germany and became incredibly popular with the Third Reich. Heinrich Himmler described Ford as one of our most valuable, important, and witty fighters. 
Hitler praised Ford in Mein Kampf and referred to Ford as an inspiration. The admiration went both ways. Because Ford was a Nazi sympathizer to the highest degree, hosting Hitler's representatives in his home and hobnobbing with Nazi officers. On his 75th birthday, he was awarded the Grand Cross of the German Eagle, the highest medal Nazi Germany could bestow on an American but all anyone cares about are his effing assembly lines which he didn't even invent. The assembly line idea actually came from Ransom E. Olds. Bill Clinton. Turns out he was just 15 years early enough to avoid the Me Too movement. Also a lot of the laws and executive order he signed led to the 2007 collapse and he is primarily to blame for the high minority incarceration rate. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.